Someone recently asked, what should a man do if he ever finds out his kids, the ones he's been raising, aren't actually his children? It's a terrific question and needless to say, a very complicated one. One that is fraught with emotion, one that in fact has no hard and fast answer. Every situation is different and each man who finds himself in this situation needs to do what's best for him. And whatever that is, no one, and I mean no one, should judge him for whatever decision he comes to. The truth of the matter is, it's a no-win situation for any man. You've loved those children, poured your heart and soul into them. You've provided for them, mentored them, did all the things dads do, and in return, they've loved you back. But in the end, it was all a lie. A lie perpetuated by a mother who at the very least lied about the possibility you might be their actual father. Contrary to what many women claim, she knows who she had relations with. But time and again, you see these mothers denying they did anything wrong. Denying their guilt by claiming they just know, know that that child or those children are yours. Only for you to find out later, they aren't. And that's a special kind of evil because not only is she defrauding and hurting you, the duped dad, she's doing it to her children, not to mention the children's actual biological father. Imagine the kind of mindset you have to have to think that it's okay and worse to try and justify or defend it, yet that's exactly what these women do. And more often than not, other women will come to their rescue, giving them sympathy and support when they get caught. For the man, it is at the very least soul-crushing and definitely life-changing. And as I said earlier, it's not just you who are duped as the dad, but those poor children who've been defrauded by their mother, a mother who supposedly loves them. So what should men do if they find out their children aren't actually their children? Well, I'm not a lawyer, nor am I giving legal advice, but here's what I would do. First, I would get a good lawyer. You cannot do this alone. What you are trying to do is disestablish paternity, and every state's laws are different. At best, it's a complex legal issue, and it may be that you're just plain screwed anyway. Don't trust Google or the internet or anyone else for information. Get a good attorney and meet with them. You need to know your rights and what you need or can do to protect them. Add to it that emotions will most certainly be running high, and those emotions can often lead to mistakes, mistakes that can ruin your case. Let your attorneys handle it. They know what to do best. Next, get a court-approved DNA test. Those over-the-counter ones are not admissible in court. Yes, they likely are proof, factual if you will, but judges cannot and will not be able to accept them as evidence due to the chain of custody requirements. Submit a petition and request that a judge court order a test. But here's the thing you need to know as a man. They aren't actually obligated to do so and won't in many cases. While it's fair to say they generally will approve them, especially if there's other information to support it, far more often than it should, They'll deny the request, leaving the duped dad on the hook. Remember, judge's prime directive, if you will, is the best interests of the children, which is really just a phrase used to justify screwing men and fathers over. What's really interesting is how these judges will argue how reluctant they are to sever the father-child relationship in these cases, yet have no problem doing so time and again in others where good fathers actual biological fathers seek to remain parents to their children in a divorce. Frankly, that's a fraud every bit as bad as paternity fraud, but we're going to leave that for another video. I'd also consider immediately ceasing any and all interaction with said children, because doing so, especially after finding out they aren't yours, could be interpreted by the courts as accepting the paternal role. Again, though, you need to consult with an attorney first to see if this is something you should do. But keep in mind, continuing to act in that paternal role 
especially after it's been found, you aren't the actual father, could end up putting you on the hook for tens, even hundreds of thousands of dollars in support. Yes, it's tough. Yes, it's cold-blooded. But continuing interaction, especially after finding out they aren't yours, can and will be used against you. I promise. Next, you got to do anything and everything you need to to protect your rights. Because the mother, the courts, government, and society will be doing everything they can to take them away. Don't let them guilt you into submission. And trust me when I say this, they absolutely will try and guilt you. They'll say things like, you've raised them all this time. It's what's best for the children and you love them, don't you? Then they'll say also that it would just be wrong to suddenly stop loving them just because you found out they aren't yours. Again, each man needs to come to his own decision on whether to walk away and consult with an attorney as well. But keep in mind, you are the victim of a crime, as are the children. So those trying to guilt you into continuing to be a victim aren't actually doing so out of the goodness of their heart. They couldn't care less about you or even the children for that matter. What they're seeking to do is to protect the criminal, in this case, the mother. They're trying to support her and absolve her from any guilt, any blame. Don't let them do that. You have a legal and moral right to protect yourself, and I'd argue protect the children from a vindictive mother who is seeking to benefit herself at your expense and her children's. And while you may not care in the end, you're also protecting the rights of the actual father, who probably doesn't even know he's a father. A man who may not even know you were in the picture when he had, shall we say, interactions with the mother. Interactions that produce the child. A child that is just as much his, and one which he has every right to be a parent to. I know that may sound crazy to some, but he's just as much a victim of the mother's fraud as you and the children are. Speaking of fraud, I would go and try and file a criminal complaint for fraud. The police will likely try and refuse it, try to avoid dealing with it in any way, claiming it's a family court issue. But it is, in fact, fraud, which is a criminal offense. If they refuse, and they probably will, document everything right down to who you spoke to and when. Document their refusal to treat the crime as a crime. This shows you're at least trying to protect your rights. And as I said, odds are nothing will come from it, as law enforcement, DAs, and judges don't want to be perceived as anti-mother. But if you don't at least try, again, it can be spun that you were okay with being a victim, that your lack of viewing it as a fraud or a criminal offense means you're okay with being held responsible for children, children that aren't yours. I'd also consult with an experienced attorney to look into filing a civil claim for damages against the mother for the fraud she committed against you and her child. Again, you may not win, and even if you do, you'll probably never see a dime from it, but it's about making the point that you and the children, not to mention the actual biological dad and all your families, by the way, were the victim of a crime committed by a heartless criminal, the mother. The fact of the matter is, paternity fraud is rampant and has been for many years now. Studies and data going back decades show that over 30% of DNA tests show the named father isn't the actual biological father. Other relevant and recent studies have found that anywhere from 10 to 13% of all fathers aren't actual biological fathers of the children they are raising. Let that sink in for a moment. One in ten of you out there who are dads are likely raising children that aren't actually your own. You aren't a father. You're an income source. You're a victim. And until and unless men start holding these women accountable, nothing is going to change. Sadly, however, in many cases, even when it's proven the man was defrauded, proven he was duped, he ends up being forced to pay. Forced to support children that aren't his by a woman who knowingly and deliberately lied to gain a financial advantage. Who says crime doesn't pay?